Hi there. Welcome to another episode of Unstructured Unlocked. I'm your host, Chris Wells, VP of Research and Development at Indico Data. And I'm really pleased to be joined today by Ozan Bielgen, uh, CEO and founder of Base64.ai. Hey, Ozan. Hi, Chris. How are you? Good to see you. I'm good, thanks. Good to see you. How are you? I'm pretty, pretty good, too. Excellent. Well, why don't you start off by uh, telling folks who you are and uh, what you do over there at Base64? Well, um, my name is Ozan Vigan. Um, I'm the CEO of Base64 AI. We automate document processing. Uh, this is an AI service that uh, can process all types of documents. We mostly specialize in structured and submissive structured documents in insurance, banking, KYC, and um, you know healthcare industries. That's great. Yeah, I um, just to let the cat out of the bag, Base64 is a partner of Indicos, and we're very happy about that. And uh, I can tell you of all the companies we worked with that have sort of like the model menagerie style, and I mean that in the best possible way, um, Base 64's coverage of what's out there is, is uh, you know, it's just not matched. It's really good stuff. Great to hear that from you. We are also very, very happy to partner with Indico Data. Awesome. Well, I think that's mostly the end of the commercial. So let's, let's talk a little bit more about uh, what's going on over there. So as CEO of, uh, you know, an AI company working with the enterprise, um, which is a tough job, um, what are your, what's your day-to-day -day look like? Well, my day-to-day -day is uh, coordinating across the teams. So our sales teams go out and try to find new customers in the insurance world. Uh, we mostly focus on um, liability insurance. Uh, that's, you know, A-court forms, loss runs, and those kind of world. Um, we also have customers in vehicle insurance, uh, which have very different document set, driver license, vehicle registration, and so forth. And then we have customers in healthcare insurance, and there we process a summary of benefits and coverage forms, SBC, uh, which is the semi-standard document for every U.S. insurance company. Okay. For some of those things, we are the only provider, and we achieved that by building it for our previous customers. So now we are trying to expand into this market. Right on. Um, I know enterprise sales can be a slog sometimes. What what do you see as common obstacles? Um, you know, someone wants to do something, you're ready to do it for them by hooking them up to your APIs. What gets in the way? Yeah. So, you know, a lot of things. So let's start with, for example, pricing. There's no set standard pricing or expectations on what this should cost. Because in our calculations, we provide 20 to 1 ROI when it comes to manual uh, data entry. So it's actually pretty cheaper uh, relative to that. Even then, uh, it takes a while for companies to adjust to that thing. And then we, we see like, you know, legal teams, they have their own concerns and questions. Yep. For that, we address them with uh, certifications. We have HIPAA, SAC2, Type 2, GDPR certification. We are receiving our ISO 2701 this year. Um, so all those things that, you know, kind of help elevate the question. Then you may hit an engineering blocker. So the engineering yeah. team is super busy. They can't do that. With that, we are working around this, this by having 400 um, ready integrations to third parties. So whether it's like Salesforce or Google Drive or database, email or scanner, uh, whatever you need, like, you know, this basic super AI comes out of the box ready for it. And we can basically, um, you know, bypass that and busy engineering schedule, at least like to get started with it. That's fantastic. I want to I want to double click on a couple things. Um, out of the box integrations are great. It sounds like this is a lot of plug and play stuff. I think I heard you say ten to one ROI on data yeah, entry. Twenty to one, yeah. In one of the insurance customer, you receive wow. twenty to one uh, ROI for a core forms. That's a big number. Um, <laughs> and then I think I heard you say that one of the the biggest blockers is that. You're changing the process for the folks that do this, right? And so that that, that, that takes time. It's a big deal. So it's a new world. Um, yeah. Luckily, like you know, all our prospects and customers already, you know, know and admitted that this is the future. 
It's not like an if question. I'm pretty sure by 2040, let's say nobody's going to do this by hand. So uh, it's a van question. So we try to obviously try to get them to adopt the new technology faster. And we believe like this is for best for them in terms of competition and, and you know in terms of focus and drive. Um, so this is like a basically uh, scheduling question. <laughs> Let's be honest. okay. So it's uh, the old saying: the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, huh? <laughs> nice, nice, yeah. yeah. Good. Um, circling back to a little bit more about you, what what brought you here? What in your background sort of set you up to you know to take on this role and build this company? Yeah, I come from software engineering background. I have actually bachelor's and master's in computer sciences. And I spent uh, about 15 years in top tech companies uh, as software engineer, architect, manager. And those companies include Microsoft, Netflix, PayPal, Uber, and Palantir. Um, throughout those, especially at Uber, when I was in, you know, one of the first hundred engineers there, uh, I noticed a big an interesting thing there. So everything was done manually because of ah. the lack of automation. And when we were onboarding a driver, you we were asking, hey, can you upload your driver license, your vehicle registration and insurance card? Those images were shipped to Philippines and wow. being transcribed manually. So it was creating a delay about like, you know, one to two days. And this is like in the best case scenario. If the customer uploads the wrong document, then there's a lot of back and forth to try to reach back the customer with text messages. Some of them come back, some of them don't. Uh, later in my career at Uber, I became the technical leader of the leasing department. Now that problem over there was even worse because leasing contracts is, you know, um, big. pretty big. So, you you know, Indico is great with unstructured documents. So it's part of the unstructured document problem. And now you also have like other types of things like you know, titles and citations and you know, all those adverse action letters that needs to be processed through uh, something. And that something was humans. So we hired more and more and more humans. And we had actually 300, over 300 people in Phoenix, Arizona going through those documents every day. And even then, the average processing time for a lease was more than five days. So <laughs> with so many humans working on this, uh, they could not achieve this. And I, then I realized like, you know, okay, that needs to be solved through an AI. But we are talking about like, you know, mid 2010s, 2017, in fact, all the way there. Uh, there was no good AI to solve this that, that addressed what we were looking for. As you know, like Transformers, they came out in 2019, 2020, and they were just babies back then. So now recently, only recently, the AI was able to like catch up with that. But Luckily, this schedule also corresponded with my, you know, Uber's IPO and my departure. Then I was like, when I was looking for the next big project, I said, I'm going to fix this. And I started. Yeah. Basic Fascinating. So you saw the problem, you lived the problem, and now you're solving the problem. I think those are the best. Uh, yeah. When you see the problem yourself, you, are, you get a lot of free uh, motivation points. <laughs> yeah. When you're feeling the pain. Yeah, of course. That's great. I love that story. Um, Let's drill in a little bit more. Uh, there's a saying that I love, which is that you ship your org chart. Um, so tell me how you all have been successful in building out a software practice in a, to your point, transformers haven't been around that long. How have you built out a successful rhythm practice of shipping AI into the enterprise, which is a, which is a really new field. It is. So I think like, you know, the, the the humble beginning is like knowing what you're good at and delegating the work that you're not so good at to other people and being very open and transparent about like yourself. So what I was good at was software engineering. So I was initially in fact developing this thing. And then when, it, when we bring it to a certain point, we were ready to try it out in the public. And then I approached the uh, friends and co uh, future colleagues who will become my product manager and then later my business uh, business development director and then we hired you know more sales folks more engineers into that team we baked up the basically the field of ranks 
And we hire also like new roles, such as customer success, right? As we have customers that we need to do those things. So over the time, we build, uh, a, you know, still very small, but um, functional team that addresses many different aspects of selling business uh, software as a SaaS market. Interesting. What What was the toughest growing pain as you were building out the org? I think hiring is pretty bad. Uh, it's like, you know, it, I'm, I think I was like very used to working in the corporate environment. All yeah. the CVs will be beautiful, brilliant people. Like, you know, they come to your way, they apply to your you know, company to work at. And you're a small startup. You really have to go and like reach out a lot. Yeah. And that is, uh, that was new to me, so, to be honest. That's, that, that took me some learning, but you know, we found, ways to overcome this we work with recruiting agencies we work with you know uh, conferences and so forth where we can find like you know good talent who's looking for this um that was that was one of the unforeseen challenges of starting an agency like yeah this is this is a little off topic but has has the rise of you know sort of ai in the public consciousness with like chat gpt and stuff like that has that drawn attention to companies like Base 64, do you think? Absolutely. I think everybody's yeah. talking about AI, or at least I feel like that. Uh, it might be an echo chamber, but um, I see this on the news all the time. Uh, I see like uh, it's on the conferences. Um, I, I see newsletter that are written by AI and they are publicly saying that is a proud achievement. <laughs> so yeah. those are like, you know, really cool things. I think it creates the awareness about AI. Um, we are not in, you know, chat pro uh, yeah. GPT business. Uh, it's a completely different thing that we are doing, but I think it's, it makes it basically uh, installs that word AI in everybody's mind, in everybody's yeah. uh, product line, everybody's like yearly schedule. So what are we going to do with about AI is yeah. going to be the question. Yeah, I'm imagining a lot of uh, CTOs and COOs out there receiving like emails from their CEO with articles yeah. saying, hey, what are we doing yeah. about this? Right. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Cool. So you mentioned a bunch of verticals where you've had a lot of success. Um, and I want to I want to drill in on a couple. I'm I'm really fascinated by um, digital transformation in healthcare and, you know, sort of you know, property and casualty and specialty insurance. Um, healthcare, I'm interested in because it's been, you know, you go to the doctor and the technology is 20 years out of date, right? And that's sort of the story of that vertical, at least from lowly patients' view. And then property, like the insurance industry broadly sort of really suffered with the low rates environment that we were in forever and got serious about digital transformation and automation. So what have you yeah. seen as like, some of the the key things that have made you successful in both of those verticals and then i want to circle back to what do you still see as struggles in both of those verticals so what i see is like you know this industry is uh has never really thought about automating this process <laughs> that's what i noticed like you know when i first started this aside from few document types there was no good standards for certain things. For example, there's no good standard for loss run. Um, there's no good standard document for medical, um, sorry, dental insurance or vision insurance, right? Um, so the titles, registrations, they're all different you know, in every state, <laughs> let alone obviously in every country that you work in. So the, the, the lack of standards was um, the a problem and also the opportunity that we, we we found ourselves in because there was no good standards what we built really helped out we built a zero shot processor that can un look, see the document and understand what's the contents of it and by doing so we were able to address so many different states and variations on those documents for so many different document types um on the other side like you know there were some good movements about making creating some standards. A core organization, which we are a member of, yep. created a lot of great forms that standardize the information exchange. Information exchange standards are very important because 
it creates a, a way to easily understand and digest this information, not just a, for AI, but also for humans. So there is no like, you know, I meant to say you this, but I actually said you this kind of like a conversations around it when there's a standard in communication. Um, for And we support a lot of accord forms out of the box about like, you know, 20 those, 20 that are very, very popular can be found immediately in Base64S. So you can just like uh, connect Base64S, start uploading and get to the, the data without doing any other further training or whatsoever. Um, in the healthcare world, we have summary of benefits and coverage document called SBC. And this is for medical healthcare, doc, medical healthcare coverage, insurance coverage for the US. Um, and those are semi-standardized by healthcare go in 2000s. However, they are not fully standard as well. Different companies, different insurance carriers, they add certain new items into it. Or yeah. it's a table looking like document. They merge columns and rows that the values are the same. So that kind of okay. confuses the AI. So we had like an untangled those things. However, we, we built the only processor that does it. We built it in 2021, actually, three years ago. And a lot of companies are using it to process their SPCs. Um, one of our customers, they were uh, processing it 12 days, this form. Now it's like Whoa. 30 seconds. So there's a big difference between 12 days and 30 seconds. Those, those are two different companies. Those are two different um, centuries, if you like, yeah. in how to do business. So we take these companies, we take our customers from 2021 to 2000, you know, 30s, 40s. Um, yeah. And that's what we did for them too. Yeah, so... I, I have a lot of questions I want to ask on this thread. Uh, first of all, let me make sure I let me make sure I'm understanding correctly. So you have a you have a zero shot approach. So if someone brings a new document, you can help them get value out of that new document, even though you've never seen it before. Yes. And then as they as they keep sending more in, the solution continues to learn until you've got enough that you can say, "We've seen enough of these. We've got the pattern. Now you can send them in. Everything's covered." Is that is that roughly how this goes? Uh, that's that's pretty accurate in, in many ways. So my thief in engineering is I can read every document. <laughs> you can read every document. Actually, anybody can read any document. Those are made for humans. So we don't have any problems just to learn any document. Let's say I receive a new letter from my uh, you know, utility <laughs> provider and it's about my power will, even if I never seen this, I can understand what this is talking about and what this, yeah. what the, what I should be doing. It says pay here <laughs> in this amount. Um, and typical machine learning, you have to go a lot of training as, you know, it's finding right. new, the correct neural network and or networks, multiple of them, executing them, uh, training them, deploying them even is a hassle. <laughs> it's, it's not an easy thing. With this, uh, zero shot approach, which we call semantic processing, our AI looks at the doc looks the document like a human does. So it goes page by page, understands like what the information is there. Is there tables? Is there key value mm -hmm. pairs? Am I looking at signatures, faces, and those kind of things? And extracts them into the standard document format that we provide for other documents. So this this is a way like you know we do one AI, one API as well <laughs> for all types of documents. It's everything happens under the hood for our customers. Going forward, if you happen to see a lot of demand on the document type, we build specialized models for it. Those models, ah. they address things that an, a standard thing cannot necessarily address very nicely. For example, if we happen to see a lot of like invoices, uh, then we can say, you know, we, we will find a lot of invoice dates. And what we want to do is like, you know, we want to normalize those days. We want to convert them to year, month, date format. They can come in you know, numbers. They can come in September, like, you know, the word. So you don't want to receive this data extraction. You want it like an ISO format. You want year, month, date, so you know exactly what that date is. So we do models that that fetches information uh, in a stan and standardize the information that our neural network layer or machine learning layer fetch. So that's great. this is how we build a lot of different models very quickly. Yeah, no, that's that's very helpful having a mental model. Coming back to the business impact, so you talked about in the healthcare space a form that took, or maybe not a form is too strong, but a document that took twelve days down to thirty seconds. That's yes. like miraculous. In you know in the in the insurance industry more broadly, you've got you know 
requests for a quote, you've got first notice of loss, you've got all these other big bundles of documents that come in, someone has to read all of it. And then after that, someone has to make a decision about it. When you take a process like that from, you know, a work week down to an afternoon, what have you guys seen as what's the impact on the business? Obviously, there's a bottom line impact. We all know that with automation. But what are the other impacts that you've seen? It takes a lot of convincing that this can happen. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. uh, a lot of our customers were running with weeks long backlogs to process documents. Uh, now they convert the backlog, entire backlog, in like you know, in in, in a in matter of hours, yeah. and get them processed. And like the new ones, they don't stop. So actually, they had to change certain processes because now things are happening too fast. They need to catch up with the speed of AI. Uh, so that was an interesting point. The second thing is. Uh, the teams that were manually doing data entry now become the teams that are reviewing the AI results. Mm. So, you know, this this form that I mentioned, the summary of benefits form, it's typically five to uh, 20 pages long form, depending on the insurance provider. So typing in everything in there uh, takes a considerable amount of time. Uh, let's just round up to an hour, if you like. Uh, but if you know, you have a task that takes an hour and an hour after hour, you know, if you have 10 forms, it's going to take like 10 hours, right? So we make this everything instant. Now the results needs to be uh, validated. It's just like, you know, you just have to look at it. It's like, okay, it looks good. Yes, gone, sent. Yeah. And so by converting this uh, massive one hour task into like a few minutes um, validation task, you create new products within that company. So this company may now for example, ask the users to upload the document themselves instead of emailing them to them. They can yeah. say, upload the document, do your verifications like that. We work with a very big service provider uh, for building management. This is how they are using our AI for, for a corporations. Now, they don't even want to do it. They're like, they upload the user, and they show it to the user. They're like, does it look good? And it's good. So and if there's any ever a mistake or so, whatever, the, the customer can pinpoint and change it. So it creates new products, new business opportunities, and um, basically a new company out of it <laughs> through AI. Yeah, that's fascinating. But one of the things I heard you say in there was that <clears throat> because the AI is helping, it's the right way to frame this, you have the human who used to have to do all of the data entry. Now they just verify the data entry, or in rare cases, if it's missed, they go back to the original document, right? But that whole process of getting the data ready to make a decision is compressed massively, right? And so now you're getting, obviously the business throughput is increasing, but I think you're also saying that because you've, you've really made, uh, you've transformed the process in such a way that it's now like decisions are almost instant that allows you to make new products, right? Because you don't have this like five day lag between when the docs come in and when, when some decisions are made. Talk to me, talk to me more about uh, where you've seen that in the insurance industry. Cause that's fascinating. I hadn't heard that before. Yeah. So one of our customers is receiving a court 25 forms yeah. uh, from customers, uh, from their clients, if you like, and they get them verified, they get them, you know, checked against the minimums and other like contractual liabilities that they have. They, they maintain and keep and maintain those forms. So previously their product was upload your form, we'll get back to you. And some yeah. of us take onboarding, taking like days and weeks and so forth. Now they upload the form and the form is instantaneous like displayed to you immediately. And like, this is the viewer form, right? So this is the information we pull out. Is that correct? And they can make like adjustments and changes. And they do get notified, of course, if the customer changes something, which, you know, they want to check against fraud and so forth. But this is very pretty easy to compare, you know, if there was any change on, on their own website. So this way, like, you know, if this looks good, then they can uh, very easily onboard new tenants, new clients, new businesses uh, through this technology. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're really bringing the customer into the, you know, underwriting process, right? Like you're making them exactly. a partner in it rather than I'm going to throw my stuff across the email wall and just wait for you to make a decision. And I, you know, it's a black box. So by bringing customers, actually our clients, uh, they have a lot of 
freedom in terms of how they want to use their resources. Yeah. So it is much more easier to ask the client. Is, let me take it back. It is much more harder to ask the client, hey, can you fill up the entire form that I need that has like, you know, 200 different pieces of information. But yeah. it's much easier to say like, upload your document and then pre-fill the information and show it to the customer. Like, does that look good? It actually looks pretty smart <laughs> and yeah. savvy too. If you do that, people are like, wow, this is happening. Um, yeah. So that's that's what basic for AI does for them. That's that's exciting. I'm one of the one of the other elements of data entry that it comes up on the podcast actually pretty frequently is um, how erratic it, it can be, right? Like the AI doesn't change how it makes predictions based on not having eaten breakfast in the morning, right? Whereas employees have bad days, um, and. Uh, so you get this effect where like the downstream data that you house afterwards becomes hard to do secondary processing on it, right? To do analytics and ask questions like, you know, I got this submission, I underwrote this risk because um, you really can't trust the underlying data in the database, at least at the level you'd like to. It sounds to me like what, you know, the pipes that you're building, everything goes into a really nice tight format. Everything's clean. Are you seeing any companies taking advantage of that, you know, that pristine data that they have post-process? So there are actually a couple of ones that have okay. really interesting stories. One of the insurance companies that we work with, where they were getting out of the out of date insurance claim, uh, insurance um, policies. So basically, the expiration date was, you know, in the past. Um, wow. If you use humans, that will take you again like days, weeks to get there, like to realize, oh, this is actually late. And uh, you do this, you do this like a you know, back and forth dance to try to get the new one. And everybody is busy. Everything is already like you know <laughs> late, and this causes a lot of friction. And they are like their clients are saying, well, why didn't you tell us this before? Why are you telling yeah. this now? And the, not understanding like there's, there are a lot of humans behind this. Uh, process now with the AI, the moment you upload it, we can tell you like this policy is expired, and you know you can build a product and say like, are you sure? Like you, know, you want to upload? We know this is expired, just in case. But again, you can say like you know to the user, uh, you know you can give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they uploaded the wrong file on their drive folder, yeah. right? Uh, so that so this way, like you know, you can make the processes go really faster. In a way, like you know, it was not able to be, be pulling more data and correct data. The second thing is, uh, even for very popular document types, when we use humans to manually extract data, yeah. they don't extract everything. Right. They have certain amount of time that they can spend on that document, so they will only like you know get the highlights. For example, from an invoice, they will get the total, <laughs> and yeah. you know the due date and that's it they're just going to move on to the next one so this is a huge problem especially in insurance and finance role the reasons yeah. are a couple of things one is they don't get the data that they can operate on for business intelligence like you said the bigger one is fraud mm. so facebook and uh, google got hit by invoice fraud Yes, uh, um, and these are like t top tech companies, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. they cannot do this, so they don't like it. think about other companies like they they could be hit too. Uh, for an amount like over two hundred million dollars, <laughs> what they do, is, what these guys do is like it's actually pretty it's pretty simple. They create an invoice and set out. They yeah. send an invoice saying like you know, hey, you owe me you know one one million in services. I made you know graphic design. They're like, okay, <laughs> here's your money. Why this is happening? Well, because they don't have the teams to go and check the purchase order and the contracts and all those other things that is associated with this because they all they're super busy to processing manually these documents. They're already back, they're already be in the behind schedule. So they don't have the teams to actually mandate the fraud. Um, no, yeah. They, and even if the humans were ninety-nine percent correct, that's still you expect to get ten thousand dollars back, right? <laughs> from that million dollar invoice. Exactly. So yeah. the idea here is, can you put AI here so it can extract everything in that document instantly? So you can use those data points to, you know, for better analytics, for better market research, finding like a cheaper vendor, for example, or, you know, combat things like fraud and understand your business better than you can ever uh, through yeah. AI. No, that's a, that's a great point. You're understanding your own business better. Um, 
I've been talking to a lot of folks in these industries, especially insurance lately. And um, everyone's like really laser focused on if we could just get the documents in faster so we can make decisions faster, we'll get more business. And that's not wrong. But like, I don't know, some massive fraction of those cases, you're never going to quote on anyway. And if you could get the data and then build the AI layer on top to say, you know what, don't quote on it. That's not the kind of business we want to do. Um, that's where you really win. Like that's that's the end game for these types of processes, I think. Absolutely. The future of business uh, will be very different, right? So we all can agree on that yeah. one. Um, the businesses um, a century ago, I feel like they yes. were using like typewriters and they had those big books. That, you know, now it's super different. Like there are databases, ERP systems. Now AI is coming into picture. Um, well, what, what's going to happen? Like you know, a decade or two later. So yeah. let's think about those things and let's build for those things. And let's not wait two decades to, <laughs> to make a complete like switch. Let's start this this transition right now. And yeah. what the, one of the things that you can do the transition today is document processing. And this is why we are super excited about uh, what we're building every day. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the technology is good enough. There are enough people out there that know how to be successful with it, like yourselves. You've got a whole bunch of in-house experts um, and the problems are big enough. So there's really no reason to wait. Absolutely. No insurance company that we work, uh, they deal with less than a million pages a year. Yeah. So just imagine like stacking those pages in front of you. It's like it fills up the entire room. And yeah. in real life, um, in real business life, what's really most important thing is like the efficiency, how much I'm yeah. spending versus how much I'm making. So this technology makes uh, the spendings go down while it, it increases the revenues as you can actually scale the business now. Yeah, absolutely. Early on in Indico's life, uh, a potential investor asked the question, like, aren't PDFs going away? Like, isn't everything going to be forms? And I think, you know, it's kind of a naive question. Um, but maybe not like at that point in history, you know, the technology was new and a lot of things were being digitized on the web. Um, and it's interesting. I think what's happened is PDFs will never go away now because the technology is so easy to work with that. Like the interface just is the document. You don't, you don't need any other interface. Um, exactly. It is a very, very, um, Philosophical way to put it yeah. out there. So documents are the interface. Documents are like XMLs and JSONs for humans. Yeah, so we exactly. can read through those things, and we cannot see through a code and XML and you know matrix. <laughs> if you don't want to see that, yeah. we need we need documents to if you, if you want to put humans in this process, and we should always. Uh, then you know it is the name is document. So PDF is never going away uh, for a foreseeable future. And it's gonna, it can be a different format, it can be X, Y, Z, but it will be yeah. some sort of a format that I can look at and understand um, yep. until we have like maybe chips in our brains. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even then, I don't want to have to do my taxes in XML. Like, let's <laughs> let's not go there. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'll settle for a document. Um, circling back to the point about the document being in the, the interface, you, you talked about it as well in a different form, which is that, you know, the the case you mentioned, which is, you know, checking for out of date policies or expired policies, the ground truth is the document. It's not like what's in the ERP system or whatever it is. Right. It, the document becomes truth. And that simplifies the world in massive ways. I mean, it's not about like, you know, what AI can do or not. It is the, the world we build around it. Like legally, yeah. that's the binding thing. Your database doesn't tell too much <laughs> to the judge. Yeah. Uh, the document that you signed, that it is the contract. So there are there are certain aspects of it that um, that will keep the documents around for for a longer time than than some yeah. investor. Yeah, I've I've worked on AI implementations with documents from the '60s and '70s. You know, an old typewriter and really stretches the old OCR capabilities right there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know. Looking, looking again towards that future, you talk about how you've, you've accelerated some of your healthcare customers from today to like decades in the future. Um, there's going to be an AI arms race in these um, 
you know, in these in these verticals, uh, Indico and and obviously Base sixty four already seeing it in the insurance verticals. As that arm race goes those goes on, they're going to be laggards. They're going to be left behind. Like they're going to lose market share because they can't quote business fast enough, right? They can't. The customer satisfaction is not there because everyone else is turning things around faster. So at some point you reach a steady state where everyone has the same size AI guns, right? So like putting the crystal ball on the table, what comes after that? Great question. So, you know, once we do, once you're done with that processing, now yeah. you talk about like what you're going to do with that data, right? Yeah. So the technology will never stop innovating. Uh, there are brilliant minds who create new things every day. And pretty sure like, you know, this is how it's going to, happen in the in the next round so yeah. my understanding my personal philosophy on that is like if you can imagine it this is going to happen so my imagination <laughs> the future looks like a lot of like virtual robots working in the office uh, doing a lot of tasks like you know that you expect from a human so just like your investor said like the documents will disappear everything kind of digital but now in the future you can just say stuff like that and expect them to happen like hey you know looking at this invoice can you get like you know better deal from me for this one yeah and you know, then this ai will obviously understand this document but also understands like how to use different websites like you know, amazon alibaba wherever you source your stuff and then get like you know you better deals so in order to do that you need the first step is here um that processing the documents in all details. So it gives AI to details that it's need it needs to find. Oh, you are looking for this kind of a cable, this kind of a, you know, claim, uh, this kind of an insurance that you want to find better. So I don't find ever an end when it comes to how to make things more efficient yeah. and faster and uh you know more comprehensively. So today, our customers, uh, they get a cutting edge because they're using a cutting edge technology. Yeah. 20 years later, cutting edge might be an entirely different thing, entirely different meaning to it. You know, obviously, AI is one thing that everybody's talking about. Quantum computers are coming. That's another, you know, whole big thing that's going to change about computation and like how how, uh, how machines are going to work. Yeah. So, with all those things, uh, it is really, really getting difficult to predict <laughs> where we're going to be uh, in 10 years or 20 years no, from now. That's right. As a, as a recovering physicist, I'm not I'm not so sure the quantum computers are coming so fast, but I, I'd be excited if they did, for sure. Um, you mentioned a really interesting point, which I, I hadn't thought of, but, you know, like, so my, I have a Pixel phone, right? And certain things I can just say, hey, call this restaurant and get me a table, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're describing a future where the insurance like quoting process is so fast that essentially, I'm just sort of dreaming here, the broker becomes like kayak for specialty insurance, right? Like, here's all the documents, go out and get all the quotes. It happens in a matter of minutes, right? And not days. And therefore, it doesn't have to be this intense personal process right you the broker process is dramatically simplified i would think you actually see this right now with health insurance so the company uses through this summary of benefits and coverage form that every insurance company has to provide now like you know the brokerage became like really a numbers game so this policy yeah. is this much and gives you 20 percent you know co-insurance the other one says 50 dollar per visit which one do you want? Like it can show this in a very standard format and ask like, you know, the user, which one do you want to pay for? Like, do you want to yeah. pay for, you know, $500 insurance that gives you that or $2,000 insurance that gives you yeah. other benefits. So this is how the future of insurance will be and should be too. So the, the more transparency will bring better competition and better services too. So it's not about like, you know, race to the bottom necessarily. It will, you know, it will help the companies to uh, it will motivate them to innovate about oh, yeah. like new kinds of services. If you think like, you know, everything about the insurance has been done, then, you know, yeah, that's, that's a very different question. I don't really agree with that. There's so much to do. And especially yeah. with this new virtual uh, task force, the virtual AI, the white collar AI is coming into the picture. Yeah um now like you'll have virtually unlimited workforce 
to build all the things that you imagined once, but did never had the budget to do it. Yeah. Yeah. White collar AI. I am stealing that boson. That's great. I love it. <laughs> Good. Um, all right. So we, we've looked into the far future. Uh, we've talked about the recent past. What, what do you see as the next, like, what's the next hurdle that you want base 64 to get over technologically? So right now, um, we are pretty good in structured and semi-structured documents. We can read them out of the box. We have already models for a thousand of them. Um, my understanding is like, you know, we need to build another thousand document types uh, for the remaining, like, you know, the second tier important documents. And when we build that, we will be the one-stop shop for air document processing. So this scaling beyond, without obviously breaking, uh, the current things are are the the challenge, the and from the technology perspective, we are the roadmap. We know how to get there, and this is like you know basically how we can execute on that roadmap question. Yeah. The other thing is, I want to bring this technology not just for the digital documents, but also paper documents. Mm. So there's a lot of paper still floating around as we spoke. I receive. I still receive letters. Right? Yeah, that I need to process and understand. This is why we partnered with uh, scanner companies, and yeah. we integrated our AI into those scanners. Now those scanners, they become smart scanners. Now they know what they scan. A scanner yeah. from A to B, there isn't really that much of a difference. They all can do pretty much the exact same operations they you know scanners the pdf they can email it to you awesome but now scanners with base 64 ai which by the way it is plugging into pretty much every scanner uh, the moment you put in the file into that uh, physical file into the scanner the paper it tells you oh you're scanning an invoice and it can also say like you know hey chris you asked me to you know put uh, your invoices into quickbooks i'm doing this right now for you so not just like scanning but also processing automatically so this goes to every industry it's for insurance claims right yeah. adverse section letters how do you process them today so you can do this by putting these files into here and like you know getting them into right channels and uh, distributed or maybe like immediately answered um in like you know processed uh for those yeah. kind of things so this is yeah. the future of a64 yeah? like end-to-end connected integrated system where you don't need to worry about uh, um you know doing this mundane tasks yourself and then for yeah. everything else for indico data for unstructured very complex pol- documents such as policies uh we are we are looking at you to to build the coolest solutions yeah. Well, we're looking right back at you. We're ready. Um, so, I mean, you're really talking about document processing at the edge, right? That, that's what you're talking about. Um, yeah. How are you going to get, I, I imagine your financial service customers are terrified of this. How do you get them comfortable with the security on that? So a couple of things. Um, let me tell you something that doesn't work. <laughs> First, and I go like, what worked? Uh, telling like, you know, hey, we have a great team, you have a big company, we are this and that, or I worked at Microsoft, those are not great answers. <laughs> this is not what security is. <laughs> this is the, uh, they don't, none of them really guarantee uh, that there's a secure solution. There are, however, other guarantees that we can actually offer. So first of all, certifications. We are SAC2, HIPAA, GDPR certified, and we get recertified every year by independent authorities who are doing this for, you know, like CPA firms and so forth. Um, they are they're credible agencies. They come and look at literally everything we do from our financial statements to how we check in code, new code, to yeah. how we hire and fire people. What are the like, you know, steps we need to do? So they look at really every single detail. In fact, they even look at like, you know, how we assess our vendors and how we reassess them uh, every like you know six months to a year. So there's there are really thorough um, investigations that we open up our books for them to come in and check us, and they in return they give us this gold seal yeah. of approval saying that like, you're doing good. Um, and let's suppose like you know you don't still trust anybody <laughs> in this world. We have the option to deploy our AI on premises. So in this on-premises approach, you can give us a computer where we can install our AI in there, and every processing will be done on-prem 
on your system, on your servers without any data going out. So your and smart so, scanner is on the same network as the base 64 tech that it's talking to. That's what you're saying. Everything is like, you know, connected to each other and yeah. live in your office or your data center, however you want to do it. Nice. So you seal this and uh, no data leaves out. So obviously then it's, you know, the most ultimate, the most secure possible approach. Um, you may also ask, you know, why, so why is not everybody doing that? Well, then they have to obviously, you know, provide the hardware. They have to have teams to understand how yeah. to manage, you know, ITs and so forth. In the cloud solution, which is equally secure, uh, there is no uh, need for like dealing with, you know, capacity playing. Like yeah. I need so 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 many so hardware. You know, I need to buy those expensive GPUs. No, we all are doing this for themselves. Yeah. Um, a third thing, a very critical aspect is data storage. So yeah. it's typically like, you know, not that our AI is processing this. The, is, the problem is like, if it, what happens to the document I sent to that? That's yeah. the, the master question. So we address this question by not storing any data if they want to. So this means like, you know, every process, everything in AI and so forth, the service, everything happens in memory, in RAM. So when the computer reboots, everything is gone. It's not stored anywhere. And, you know, because we don't have any files, we cannot be breached. Yeah. So for customers that want ultimately security, we offer this on-prem and also in the cloud. Uh, so we don't have to store anything about the document. Right on. Those are great answers. Um, so I... Uh, we got here. I asked the question, like, what's the next technology hurdle for for these industries, right? Healthcare, financial services, and then specifically insurance. What's the hurdle that the buyer needs to get over? Like, what's your advice for the folks out there, for example, in the insurance industry that they have a mandate to automate, they have a mandate to get AI involved, and they're just getting in their own way? What's What's your best piece of advice for those folks? I would say find one process, hopefully like, you know, the important one. And then talk to us, basically for AI mm. or Inicode for that matter. Let's talk to us and let us show you like, you know, what we can do. And start small means like, you know, don't start with like 50 different processes. We can discover those processes. We can yeah. understand like, you know, what's in there. And we can, this is also very helpful to prioritization and finding the best ROI. ROI. But we don't recommend like you know, starting everything at once. We start, when you start with one yeah. process, when you see the results, I think actually the, the rest comes uh, yeah. by itself. So yeah. we have our customers telling us, hey, can you do this document type? Can you do this process too? Instead of us trying to upsell our AI. Um, because they really see this is working. And they really see the benefits of it. They, they compare it with the, doc, the, the the processes they did not automate. So it's a, then like a no-brainer to expand the AI's uh, capabilities or give them better and more jobs, more difficult jobs, if you like. Uh, yeah. This is what I would recommend. So don't be shy. Like, you know, there's a uh, comment, try it out. Um, we, are, we have sales teams and customer success teams that are waiting for a call. And, you know, yeah. they will be happy to address that. Yeah. I. I told you I was going to steal it. I didn't think I'd do it this fast, but the white collar AI, right? Like when you hire that junior employee, the first thing they're doing is just, you know, you're an analyst at one of the big investment banks. You're just looking at decks all day and getting details out of, you know, whatever proposals you're seeing. Start with that. Treat the white collar AI like it's a junior member of the team and then give it more responsibilities as you trust it, right? It's a great yeah. mental model. Yeah, I mean, our AI is right now uh, like an intern to new grad level. Yeah. Yes. So yes. for any task that, you know, you will put in that level of person, you can use our AI for. And obviously over the time, our AI will, uh, like a human, will do get better and better and, and be able to handle more sophisticated tasks. Yeah. And at that point, the difference will be like, you know, for a human to get there will be maybe like takes like 10 years. If they're really good at their job, if they really devote themselves in, well, this AI will get there much faster. And once it gets there, every instance of this AI will actually get there. You know, you to train a doctor, every person goes to a third year of, you know, yeah. hustling. Uh, with AI doctors, for example, <laughs> there will be only one training. So that's, that's will be like very, very efficient. So they don't need to retrain every person yeah. they hire. Once will be good enough for the entire division and company. Yeah, that's a great point. And 
continuing the analogy, I think chat GPT is sort of like a director level employee, white collar AI, but it likes to hallucinate and it also will occasionally lie to you very confidently. <laughs> well, I mean, this is a very different thing that they are doing. There Not are, totally. yeah. so they are chatbots, so they generate words. Uh, yeah. you know, you give them a topic, then they just like, you know, keep talking. So it's like, it's a very different kind of personnel, different kind of totally. person. They can build paint and you know, they can paint stuff. They yeah. can, uh, write, uh, blog posts. However, in document processing, especially you need a very different kind of person. That's right. you need a kind of AI. <laughs> you, this AI should be analytical thinking. She'll be like, you know, very attentive yeah. to detail. It, you know, the numbers, digits really matter here. So you may want, you want, yeah. want, you want with someone with some AI with uh, more like a, you know, math brains. That's right. Like. Yeah. You don't um, want your accountant to be creative most of the time. Yeah. I mean, I don't need you to paint me something. <laughs> I want to do this <laughs> later correctly, accurately, and instantly. That's what I'm looking for. So, you know, from the technology perspective, this is also very different things. Those are, they are more like generative AI, as it's called, right? Um, we utilize generative AIs as well. So we do, for example, signature data extraction. So we can find the signatures on a document regardless on which page. And in fact, we can compare it against other signatures, so let's say your check versus your driver license. These are available yeah. today at Base 64 AI. Um, with that, we want when we extract the check, we actually clean it up. So we remove like you know, any lines or so forth ah. under the hood. So we have a good picture of the signature. Uh, and find like you know the, the the actual signature, not like you know the, the documents, templates, and you know all those lines that might come from the document, or the letters you know that over which they signed. Uh, so those are generative AI that we use, like the same technology that powers GPT three. So we use in a very very different methods or uh, ways. That's awesome. Well, I think this just about wraps us. We've covered a lot of ground today. This has been another episode of Unstructured Unlocked. My guest today has been Ozan Bielgen from Base64 AI. He's the CEO and the founder, and uh, he's got a really compelling vision of the future of AI on the enterprise. Thanks, Ozan. Thank you, Kunis. Thanks for hosting me. Absolutely. And go if you're listening, go check out their website, see what they can do for you. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>